Hello my friends and welcome to a series I will be sharing throughout the summer probably where I'm going to be tackling the major subjects and maybe some of the minor subjects and sharing some of my favorite resources those that cover those subjects that are really good for them. I have kind of done something similar in the past and I've called it uh, how to homeschool without a curriculum. Uh, there's kids playing on the trampoline. There's going to be screaming. It is life in the summer. And this is very similar to those videos, homeschooling without a curriculum, except sometimes we now use some curriculum if it works for us. And so I didn't want to completely pigeonhole it, so I'm not calling it quite that now, but it is very similar. So I'm going to be going over, we're talking about science. I'm going to be going over some more like curriculum based things to begin with and then what's on my list. Uh, some general resources, some books, and then ending with some games. I am sure I'm going to miss a ton of resources. I would love for you guys to give some of your favorites in the comments below. That always makes it just like a bird just going and crazy in my backyard. It's perfect for science. Um, it always makes it more special when you guys, like it, it's just doing so circles. I think it wants to go to my bird feeder, but kids are back there. That is so funny. It's just circling around. We don't get many birds. I'm very interested. It's just circling around, you guys. I haven't seen a bird. Well, I've seen pigeons and geese. Other than that, I really haven't seen birds in my backyard in the last year. So I'm easily thrilled. So we like nature study. At least I do. Um, I don't know where I was going with where I was starting that sentence and then getting distracted by a bird. But we'll start with the more curriculum based things and then go into the other things that I was saying. Science is not one of my best subjects. It's one of my weakest. I would say science and math. Those are the two that are kind of like, other than the nature-y side of science, those are the two I care about the least, I'm interested in the least, I feel like I know about the least. But I have a couple of resources. First of all, curriculum based stuff. I, years and years ago, bought The Well-Trained Mind by Jesse Wise and Susan Wise Bauer. And I read the first sections of this, the, you know, the kindergarten section and the younger years section. And it helped in some ways put me at ease for science. And then I never looked at it again for the older years. Um, I feel like it's a really good resource. So I have like a really old edition. There's like another edition or two since I bought this one. But what I really like, especially for grade one, is how simple the science was. Let's see if I can find it here. It broke it down nice and easy for the first year. I think it was like I can't find the exact information here now. This is what I'm going to be doing with my second grader because he wasn't homeschooled for first grade. So first grade is life science, animals, human beings, and plants. So I believe, yes, it was 20 weeks on the animal kingdom, 10 weeks on the human body, and the last six weeks approximately on the plant kingdom is what they recommended for grade one. And I was like, oh, this I can do. We can learn about a different animal for 20 weeks, like each week for 20 weeks. It was great. So there's a lot of stuff in here I've never used, but I do feel like this was helpful. So I wanted to recommend The Well-Trained Mind. We, this last year, have started using some of the Sabbath mood science units. And overall, I feel like that's been going well. Um, we, only one child did one of them. And we're going to try a couple more for next year. And then I want to give a bit of a review after we've had a little bit more of a balanced time using them instead of just judging it based off of one unit. So that is very Charlotte Mason based. It's very living book based. I love that part of it. So I'm excited to explore some other units. And then also I really like this everything you need to a science in one big fat notebook. This is the complete middle school study guide. And this goes over like all of middle grade science throughout this book. And it's a really good resource 
tool uh, for if you're studying something and you need another way to explain something or something like that. They also have uh, questions at the end of each chapter. So my two oldest used it a bit this year and it's just a really good resource to have, I feel like. I don't think that each of these chapters are really enough on their own, but they can fill in some gaps and stuff. Okay, so those are more of my like curriculum overview, our favorite books there. Then random things. I mean, most of our stuff is going to be books and we have quite a few games. So I don't have much in this section, but one of the things I like are these backyard birding flashcards. I, this is one of those things that I saw homeschoolers have years ago and I just loved the idea of it. Now I'm not saying these are necessary because I have something else coming up that might replace them, uh, but I really enjoyed them. I like that they have the different birds. They've got the male and female bird and it tells you if it's in Eastern North America or Western North America, which is very helpful. And then on the back, they've got the information, the map, description, habitat, voice, size, etc. And we have gone through and used these in a variety of different ways over the years. Sometimes we would go through and find some we want to learn about. Sometimes we go through and find ones that we've seen in our backyard. Um, I don't know. I feel like there's, this is just really identification cards, which is good, but it would be nice. It probably is out there. Uh, to find like some actual practical ways to use this like I don't know some games to play or just maybe some more useful ideas but I really like them as someone that really likes birds that makes sense the other thing here that's not a book is this is a squishy human body with 21 removable body parts now some little kids used it last so he probably doesn't look too good. His name is Bertram. My big kids named him the first time we did a human body unit. And it comes with a poster with all the organs and different parts of this guy. And he's not put together right now. So you've got like the back where like the feet are upside down here. Um, everything goes in, one side has the bones, one side has the muscles, and then you've got all the internal organs that my kids love to um, put together. And like I said, the little kids have used it last. There's a foot, there's the rib cage, it's got a skull, all sorts of body parts. He's got a brain in here somewhere, where's his brain? Oh, his brain's probably in his skull. Yeah, it's got a brain in there uh, and they're like, they're very squishy little things and the kids just got a kick out of this. So it's definitely something that we've kept and will keep for future human body units. Definitely recommend it. Would be better if they would have put it back correctly. But... And it comes with a little book too. So it's got the book that goes through all the different parts. We start with the mouth and move down through the organs, go to the stomach, intestines, and they show you where to put them in the body. And so that's, it's really cool. I, that was a really good purchase. Okay, let's move into some books. Uh, one thing I did not pull out is any nature lore type books or local field guides. We have lots of those. Um, nature and animal wise, one of my absolute favorites is Nature Anatomy by Julia Rothman. She has quite the collection with these now. She has farm anatomy, food anatomy, ocean anatomy. I feel like there might be another one. I love all her books. Uh, once again, it's more of a resource. There's, I don't know if, I mean, people could but I don't think the average person could just use this as a text and glean enough out of here by itself. But I really like it, especially for nature journaling. If I see something, I find it much easier to copy one of her drawings 
there's there's this covers so much like we've got the bark the flowers anatomy of a fern we've got mushrooms foraging different animals and there's there's so many things in here um but it's one of my favorite purchases we have used this so much i don't know why i haven't bought the rest of them they are all just as beautiful but this one's kind of more applicable to our homeschool. And then two encyclopedia, animal encyclopedias that we really like are Encyclopedia of Animals written by Jules Howard. This is by Wide Eyed. I really like the format of this one. Let's get it so it's not so bright. So you can see it a little better. Um, I like the illustrations, the information. It's just very well laid out. So my first grader has been going through and picking his 20 animals for next year. I really like this one. And then my other favorite is the Firefly Encyclopedia of Animals. Different illustration style, much more realistic, um, but same general idea. We've got it broken up and we've got, you know, a little bit of information on each animal. I feel like it gives a good overview of a bunch of animals. And then from there you can get books on specific animals um, and it covers everything from insects to mammals and uh, yeah we have a few different encyclopedia animal type books these two are my favorites then I have three more books once again these are not these are not all our science books these are just our favorites the Usborne Sea Inside Your Body Book is one of the first Osborne lift the flap books that we ever purchased and it has been the most well used once again I gotta make it darker so you can see lots of different flaps for body parts um, this one the the poop on the bottom is always a favorite all the kids go to that first um, but we go through all sorts of different things about the body breathing pumping blood, bones and muscles, brain power, the senses, drinking and weeing. So my kids have used this a ton for the body. And then another really good body book, but much more intensive is The Way We Work by David McCulley. His stuff is great, uh, but this one is much more intensive. We're going more in depth on the human body yeah, definitely if you're doing the human body with, I would say like sixth grade and up, this is a great resource. And then we also love his The Way Things Work Now. I think this might be the newest edition. It was when I bought it, but it's been years. He's updated this a few times and this just covers so many different things. Uh, once again, I would say that it's for older kids, mostly sixth grade and up, except my sixth grader has loved this book since he was four years old. We got it out from the library multiple times and then I was like, okay, we need to buy it. There's also a woolly mammoth that is part of the book. He takes you through a lot of the stuff. Um, I remember we went to a science center when my 12 year old was four. And then like six months later, maybe four months later, we got this book out from the library and he turned to a page and he was like oh mom look a gyroscope like at the science center and my like four-year-old was remembering the word gyroscope uh, so if you have a kid that is interested in all things science like mine is um, this one definitely is a much must purchase so yeah we have lots of other science books, lots of like question and answer books, nature lore type stuff. But that's all I'm gonna share for books because if I was doing book recommendations for each of these subjects, that could be a whole nother video. That bird is still going. What is it doing? I'm so intrigued. Um, games, I have four games to recommend. Uh, we really like snap circuits. We it's pretty expensive though. We were gifted a snap circuits set So that was really nice because I think get there at least 70 plus dollars and My current sixth grader he he wore that thing out. He like ended up 
breaking a bunch of things and uh, killing things. And that was just because, first of all, it was used. And second of all, like he used that thing like crazy. I may purchase another one for my younger ones coming up here shortly. And then we have two games by Think Fun. We have Circuit Maze, which is similar to Snap Circuits, except they give you like the start and the finish and you have to figure out how to complete the circuit. And then there's Gravity Maze, which helps a lot figure out how gravity works. We also actually, another one, we have Laser Maze by them as well. And that helps you see where using mirrors can bounce the laser off. All of those are really great. And then the last one is Wingspan, which is a bird game that comes with info cards that are very similar to these birding cards, except it's in game format. We have multiple expansions. We have at least one expansion. Um, Asia? No, I can't remember which expansion we have. We have the one that you can play with two players. And we've played it quite a bit. They have little eggs that look like mini eggs and you collect different birds and put them in your forest or your grasslands or your wetlands and collect points based on different things. It's really informative and there are so many bird cards. There's multiple different expansions and then you add in the birds from those continents each time. Uh, definitely a fun way to learn about birds and definitely recommend the game in general. So that's an overview of, I just wanna say some of our favorite science resources. I don't technically know where geography falls, but we're gonna put that as a separate subject yet. Let me know what are some of your favorite science resources, like the top of the top, the cream of the crop, what are they? And if you guys would like to see a specific video on a specific subject next, let me know. I can make them in the order that you want to see them. Um, but yeah, that's, that's science and I will be back at some point with another video.